Well, for them, but that's not the well, primary issue. They're showing them. up today. Right. Guys, yeah. guys, guys, we want to get back down yeah. to Manhattan because uh, Joe Diaguardi is apparently at the podium right now about to make a concession speech, losing tonight to Kirsten Gillibrand in the race for the U.S. Senate. Let's listen. Out there. Thank you all. Thank you. Well, I did speak to Senator Gillibrand and congratulated her. You know, the most important thing when you look at our society, especially this state, is you need to have competition in order to bring out the important issues. As you know, this state is not in good shape. We've had 800,000 plus people unemployed, several hundred thousand foreclosures and growing, and you know, we gotta get involved. Just can't wait until an election and run. We as citizens have to get involved and stay involved. Now, I want to thank all of those who encouraged me to get into this race. Don't forget, I only started last March at Grand Central Terminal. Then we had to go through the convention process, and then we had to go through the petition process, and then a primary. And you know, in New York, primary is on September 14th. Middle of September doesn't give you much time. And we were outspent 10 to 1 in the general election. Now, we had a message. I hope it came across in the debates. How many of you saw those debates? So that you saw, right? But a message in a debate is nice, but to win, you need to repeat that message constantly. And that's a lesson that I hope some of you who want to run, you know, take back, that you do have to have somebody. You don't have to have a lot. You saw what Corzine did. He lost with 100 million against Christie. But let me tell you what I did yesterday. I went in front of the debt clock. I remember back in 1993, when I wrote the first book, Unaccountable Congress, I got a call from Seymour Durst, the realtor who owns a lot of buildings. He's not with us anymore. His children are there, and I'm gonna be calling them in the next few days. Why? Because when he saw that book, he said, Joe, you know, you're right. We've got this credit card mentality. You're a certified public accountant. You spelled it out in this book. I want to do something to alert America myself. I can't write a book, but I have this idea that on one of my buildings, I'd like to put a clock of some sort so that people see this debt go up. And I said, Seymour, that is a great idea. But you know what? You're probably going to use the wrong accounting system. You're going to take the numbers from the Treasury Department because that's all that's available. And he said, well, we've got to start with something. Well, I went there yesterday, and sure enough, that number is approaching $14 trillion. Now, that sounds like a lot, but that's the least of it. That's the bonded debt. And I think you've heard me say this. If you add everything off the books, it's really $63 trillion. That's the iceberg we are headed for in 10 years that we got to avoid. If we don't, China will be the number one economic power. You don't want that, right? No. So we have to do something about it. I thought as a senator, I'd have a bigger bully pulpit to do it, but guess what? I'm gonna to continue to do it as a citizen. I'm not gonna stop, all right? And another thing I'm gonna dedicate myself to is what Obama should have done when he was elected. When he had political capital, he should have had a massive infrastructure project to put people to work right away and that would create a lot of economic fluidity. So now I'm gonna become much more active to make sure that Tappan Zee Bridge is built soon and done the right way. And that tunnel from Jersey has to go through. And I will do something as a citizen with my foundation, Truth in Government. But let me at least say to my family, you know, they've been with me now. I remember what I said to my sister and brother, my parents were alive then, I'd like to do something important with my life. So in 1984, I announced for Congress. Everybody says, you're crazy. You're an accountant. You're not involved with the party. And we did it. But thank you, Angel and, and, and Dick, for being with me back then. My wife, Shirley, my son, John. Kara is not here. She's on the West Coast. And my whole family, thank you for sticking with me. Not easy to run a major campaign when your name is in the paper and the family's calling you. Why did they say that about you? I said, this is the way it is. This is politics. But let's think about this state. 
This is the Empire State, but it's not quite there. It has been sinking. We all have to worry about the future of this state, and hopefully I would have at least wanted to see one of the senators a Republican. I mean, let's face it. You need checks and balances, right? We don't have that in the state right now. Let's hope that we get the state Senate to be Republican, because then we'll start having that, right? And I think that's going to happen tonight. And then I understand the House of Representatives is going to be Republican. But let's hope. But let's hope it's Republican by a very big margin so we can get something done. Now, it doesn't look like we're going to take back the Senate, but at least we're going to have a number of seats, whether it's six or seven or eight, and that's going to be important. So listen, there's hope, but you have to be the watchdogs. If we the people are not the watchdogs on elected officials, they tend to get arrogant. And then what comes after arrogance? Corruption. We saw that in Albany. We don't want that in the future. God bless you all for being with me, my family, my friends, my staff, the volunteers. God bless you all. Thank you very much. Joe Diaguardi live here on News 12, Westchester at Hudson Valley. Uh, a concession speech, still fiery. Joe Diaguardi, never shy, never met a microphone he didn't like. He certainly is a passionate man about things like uh, the U.S. deficit uh, and making changes. Uh, gentlemen, uh, Mike Edelman, what do you think about his vow to continue fighting even though he lost what well, looks like 60-40 to Kirsten Gillibrand? I think, I think it doesn't make a difference what he lost to Kirsten Gillibrand by. I think, first of all, everything he said tonight was true. And if Washington, if, if, uh, if uh, the other senators that are down in Washington, and if the policymakers in this country do not listen to people that understand economics and understand business cycles and understand debt and how to get out of debt, exactly what he said is going to come true, which is that China is going to be the most important nation in the world and we're going to be a third world nation. It's time for us to get a house in order. Just because he couldn't beat Kristen Gillibrand doesn't mean he has a lot more in him to contribute to the discussion. And mm. he said he's going to do it. He has a foundation which will enable him to do it. We didn't hear him really thank Ed Cox very much because Ed Cox, the, the head of the state GOP, mm -hmm. Did not support him in, uh, did not support him before the primary, forced him into a primary. Right. But yet, uh, Joe DiGuardi is almost emerging as the statesman for the Republicans tonight. Is he not? Could could he have a party position? Will I don't know about a TV I don't, show? I, I, <laughs> maybe maybe <laughs> Fox will give him a, a uh, his own show. But I'll tell you what, he's a very bright guy. Uh, he made the case. Many people weren't listening in New York because in New York there's a lot of knee-jerk voting for liberal Democrats when it comes to sending them to Washington, particularly downstate. The fact of the matter is, it doesn't negate the truth of what he's saying. And he will be, if I know Joe, he will be around uh, and we will hear from him in the future. Ed Cox was standing right, right. behind Joe Diaguardi. Ed Cox Aguardi didn't help. And, and Joe Diaguardi didn't even mention Well, he his shouldn't name. have mentioned Ed because, don't forget, he had to win the primary against two of Ed Cox's mm -hmm. selections. <clears throat> he wasn't targeted. He ended up not being targeted mm -hmm. by the National uh, Senatorial Committee. Right, so and he got no money, money from the state. No right. money. So he no was money. out there by himself. And when he said he was out spent uh, 10 to 1, I don't know what the number is. He probably spent 400000 and she probably spent $4 million. And let me, and, and also, you know, it's 60-40. It's not 80-20 here, uh, mm -hmm. Lawrence. I mean, you know, Jill, Gillibrand did well, but in a, like, in a demo liberal democratic state like New York is, you almost have to expect that she would get 60%. Right, you would expect it, but at the same time, he is a likable campaigner. He is a hardworking and obviously extremely articulate. And when he was running in the primary, he was clearly the most articulate and energetic of all the three Republicans that were running. And frankly, as far as Ed Cox is concerned, I think his days are numbered as head of the New York State Republican Party because all of his picks were wrong. When yeah. he was supporting Lazio, when he was suppor them. supporting Steve Lee, a Democrat against mm -hmm. Lazio running a Democrat as a Republican I mean he's made all the wrong decisions but I disagree with the fact that the Diaguardi says that we should have a check and a balance with with one Republican senator and one Democratic senator that's not the check and balance we need mm. all right let's look at some more numbers, more numbers. guys because more numbers are rolling in now and we're gonna start uh, I believe at the top of the ticket let's mm -hmm. go uh, to the race for governor is that where we are starting 
We are. All right. Andrew Cuomo, a big win tonight for him over Carl Palladino. He has already declared victory, though we have not heard from Carl Palladino. Here's the latest numbers now with 9% of the precincts reporting statewide. Andrew Cuomo at 58% of the vote, a full 20 points more than Carl Palladino at 38%. News 12 has projected Andrew Cuomo the winner tonight easily over Carl Palladino. And moving down on the ticket, we already uh, also projected uh, Kirsten Gillibrand. She took uh, this race 60% of the vote to 40% for Joe DiGuardi. Again, this one over tonight. You just heard Joe DiGuardi uh, give his uh, concession speech and earlier uh, Kirsten Gillibrand uh, thanked the voters for re-electing her. I shouldn't say re-electing, electing her to finish out the term that Hillary Clinton uh, had left to become Secretary of State. Kirsten Gillibrand was appointed to the seat by Governor Patterson in January of 2009. Now she will finish out the next two years of this uh, seat. This Another year. big winner tonight, Chuck Schumer, 63% now for Schumer over Jay Townsend's 37%. <clears throat> Schumer, the projected winner here on News 12, handily defeating the Another insurgent Republican with Tea Party credentials, former Congressman Joseph DiAguardi of Ossining, pulled off another major upset in the GOP U.S. Senate primary. DiAguardi got 42% of the vote in that race. It was a three-way race, while David Malpass got 38% and party designee Bruce Blakeman got only 21%. News 12's Tim Cassidy continues our Team 12 primary coverage with more on DiAguardi's surprise victory. Senator Gillibrand's worst nightmare has come out tonight. The Ossining certified public accountant surrounded by supporters Tuesday night after a big primary win. Joe DiAguardi went from being shut out at the Republican convention to getting himself on the ballot through petitions to knocking out two opponents. That victory united the Republican and conservative parties. A day later, DiAguardi is mapping out his election strategy to take on Senator Kirsten Gillibrand come November. I think that who I am as a person, my experience in tough races and in you know tough debates is going to give me uh, a good edge in this race, especially as she is dropping uh, in the polls with Obama. Gillibrand, who was selected to serve by Governor Patterson two years ago, has raised a significant amount of campaign money. But Diaguardi, who served in Congress in the 80s, says campaign money isn't the issue. What Washington is spending every day is. We're spending money we don't have. We're borrowing from countries like China that don't share our values, and we're putting the American dream in jeopardy. And despite the fact Democrats outnumber Republicans nearly two to one in New York State, DiAguardi is predicting a political revolution. I think I'm at the right place at the right time, and I think Senator Gillibrand is going to be in, in, in real trouble with me. The candidates have less than seven weeks to square off. Tim Cassidy, News 12. Now another candidate with Tea Party support, outspoken Assemblyman Greg Ball won by a large margin.